open stuff. Hold on. So, it's showing that we're live. We're just going to go. <laughs> All right. We'll look. Here we are. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, hi, everyone. Atlanta. Atlanta. Um, we have a um, very special guest from the vine, Erin Wilson, who recently going to be uh, published. Our book is recently going to be launched. You guys have seen the advertising for it. Why can't I stick to my diet? Erin um, has a host of different kinds of certifications and life coaching. Um, tell me what else I've forgotten. <laughs> but mainly, she's just an overall badass. And really, and she coaches people with emotional eating. She's life coaching. You can find her on tons of blogs on the internet. You can find her on lots of articles. She's recently been published in the last month and four or five, or just last few weeks in four or five articles, talking a lot about um, sugar and things like that. And I wanted to bring her into the group because we get a lot of questions around diet and what's the right thing to do, what's your way to um, feel about this diet or that diet. So, um, welcome, Erin. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I can barely hear you. So, you can? Okay. Better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yay. So, I think my slide is a little gray. Mercury retrograde. Yeah, Mercury retrograde to empaths is not working out. <laughs> so, anyway, well, I, I want to do, let's see. What I want to do is um, see how it's working for the group. I think we're good. All right. So, we can so anyway, give everybody a little bit about your background, or how you got into this kind of work, and is it? There. Um, I, I think it, there's a delay. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, do you want me to sign out and come back in? No, we're good. I just said to, as I turned the volume off on the one in the Facebook group. Okay. Okay. So we should be good. All right. You want to hear my life story? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Your life story. Did you get the line of work? All right. Uh, as well as, as applies to my book. I was one of these people who, or ladies, who was brought up like skinny is best, right? Skinny is like the gold, the gold at the end of the rainbow. It is the holy grail of life. So I was brought up very much in a household, in a culture where skinny is everything. And yet we talk about food constantly. <laughs> so it was always like, what's for dinner? What's for lunch? Did you know that she's gained weight? You should be skinny if you want a boyfriend. So a lot of conflicting messages around food. But I also always had a very strong just pull towards sugar. Like I remember being little and eating my whole Easter basket before we even got to church. <laughs> it's like, but like my brother, like he didn't care, but he would eventually eat it. But I was like, <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever get it again, which was actually a very reasonable fear because I probably didn't get any sugar again until Halloween. So I was always very preoccupied with not being fat and then craving sugar, which is a huge disconnect as far as like goals. Yeah. But um, the first time I remember going on a diet, I was 14, almost 15, and I lost 30 pounds over the summer to the point where a couple of teachers in my high school, which was a pretty small high school, thought I was a transfer student. So that's how much weight I lost over, what, 12 weeks? Um, and that's the first time I remember ever going on a diet and really understanding the power of being skinny, of being that, looking that way, being that sort of um, body type. However, maintaining it was a whole nother beast because I didn't really understand at 15 what eating super, super low fat, low calories, over-exercising long-term is unsustainable. You can only work out so many hours in the day and you can only cut your calories so much until your body starts rebelling, which just started a, heat, a lot of, you know, dieting and gaining weight, dieting, gaining weight. And I was never really just living. I was always either on a diet, 
eating like I was going to go on a diet soon, so just live it up right now, <laughs> or making myself miserable in either extreme. I never had this sort of peace around my body, even though I lost weight from my wedding and my pictures looked great, even though I lost my baby weight really quickly after both pregnancies, I was always kind of even at war with my body. And at the time I was working out a lot. I was teaching group exercise, you know, yoga, Pilates, spinning, you name it, tough mutters. And yet I was never really looking how I wanted to look, which I thought was the goal. Now I realize it's actually like you want to feel and be and occupy a certain space and then your body will reflect it. I thought it was the other way. I thought if I got skinny, then I get happy or be at peace. And this is like not that many years ago that I was <laughs> still operating off a teenager's mindset. So once I got really into nutrition and realized I was – living off of Diet Coke since I was about 12 and various huge amounts of sugar, that that was the missing piece. It had to be the nutrition part. So once I became very aware of, it's not calories in, calories out, as much as the hormonal and chemical reaction our body has to certain stimuli, which sugar is. Sugar is a very strong um, set of molecules all shoved together that I believe I just react to more strongly than normal people, mm -hmm. the moderation people, the people that can take it or leave it because I could never take it or leave it. I wanted to eat it all and then eat more frosting <laughs> and then drink right. a diet coke. So it was sugar that your family rewarded you with? Yeah, but it was also like taboo in the same way. It was like, mm -hmm. you're sad, eat a cookie. You don't want to get fat because you never get a boyfriend. So it's like, Exactly. I'm confused. I'm going to go eat a cookie about this. So it was a lot of mixed messages. And then once I was aware of the power of being thin, the power of being skinny, the power of looking a certain way, and I wanted to keep it, but yet internally, anytime I had a feeling I didn't like, or just quite frankly, it was, I was awake, sugar was always a possibility. So you know, stuck in traffic, let's eat a tub of frosting, uh, fight with your mom, let's eat ice cream. So a lot of extremes. But the crazy thing about all of this, especially to my friends that have known me since forever, they're like, but you were never overweight. Like, yeah, because I was always exercising. Mm -hmm. So that part of it might have been okay, because of, you know, teaching 10 classes a week and all this other stuff. But my mind was always like, on you know what I could eat, what I just ate, could I be skinny by next week? Are my pants going to fit for tomorrow? I never had any sort of sense of the ability to just not worry about that. It was always on you know top priority. But I also was just very aware of how much like bandwidth this was taking up of my life. Mm -hmm. That. Once I realized there was another way, I mean, I have so much extra time now. I started a business. I wrote a book, you know, <laughs> doing a lot of other things with this extra space I have in my thoughts, in my life, in my, you know, subconscious even that my weight, my food, everything took up. So the irony is like, once I stopped obsessing about what I weighed was when I was able to weigh what I wanted, which... Mm -hmm. People used to tell me all the time, and I was like, no, 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 what's the secret? Like, I want to know, like, the secret password to that club. I don't want to hear your nonsense about finding inner love or something. Like, that sounds like a bunch of hippie stuff. But it wasn't until I was able to realize it wasn't a bunch of hippie stuff. It might be applicable to me. And that there is a lot of science behind why a lot of women start with sugar in their coffee and in with wine every day. It's yeah. just – and eventually at 4 o'clock – they, you know, shift over, but it's caffeine. It's, you know, the sugar caffeine combo. And then the sugar alcohol combo is what keeps a lot of women in that constant wanting to lose weight over soul cycling, wanting to lose weight over soul cycling place because of how it impacts us, like the hormones, especially. So learning all the behind the scenes stuff, I believe really resonated with like the intellectual part of me. And then the inner peace I found from it was able to like make it possible. So if I had, you know, a bad day or stuck in traffic, I didn't think that the answer was in the tub of frosting. 
the answer is like me acknowledging I got stuck in traffic. Being stuck in traffic is not great. Is it a tragedy? Not really. Is it annoying? Sure. But it used to be any excuse would lead me to sugar. Or if sugar was introduced, like say it was a birthday party, I would get so happy <laughs> about wow. the idea of eating it. When looking back, it's like, well, why was I having such extreme emotions with food? So oftentimes with my clients, I will say, you just want to separate your food from your feelings, which is possible because when we're little, they're very much intertwined. And especially as we go to the holidays in which, you know, the pies and the cakes and the desserts, and we always have this in our family, we always have that in your in-laws, how many feelings and emotions and traditions are wrapped up in things we put in our mouth. And it's a lot for many, many families. You know, we always have this soup on Christmas Eve. We always have this dessert on Christmas Eve. Right, right. You no, know, it wouldn't be Christmas Eve. Well, actually, it still would be Christmas Eve. You would just be eating sushi instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, so when you say the intellectual part, did you start to study food or did you start to study more the mindset behind food? What kind of because I know you've gone through a lot of certifications and things like that. Is that kind of where the journey started? Well, when I when I first started, I just wanted the noise in my head to stop. I, I compared it to like a white noise machine you might have in like a doctor's office. Right. It was always going. I just wanted that to stop. And I I was I think like so far into like my coach, my first health coaching training or whatever that I was very aware of the chemicals because like, I always thought like I eat a little bit of sugar. Everyone always thought it was cute too. Like they'd give me like bags of jelly bellies for my birthday. Like, isn't it cute? Aaron loves sugar. Like, ha ha. Um, <laughs> it went, once I realized it kind of went hand in hand, then I was able to like really cut it out. But the thing that was hardest for me was getting rid of diet Coke. Really? That yeah, that was so much harder because I had been drinking it since I was like 10, maybe. And I know you and I are the same age, but like in the 90s, fat free was the way to be, right? <laughs> I had, I mean, there's fat seven, fat. And like my sorority was like 59 cents of soda, 69. I mean, it was like I went through tons of those. I'm surprised my teeth haven't fallen out all day, every day. And then I would eat like snack wells when I studied. Like it was really a fabulous combination, but that's just how it was. Like that's chocolate, chocolate. yeah, the ones that are shelf stable and they're probably still fine somewhere. Um, but that, that's what everybody was doing. Like fat was the problem. So you know, we, Susan Powder, fat made you fat. Actually, a pound of gummy bears and a vat of Diet Coke is what leads to uh, extra body fat. But at the time, it was like conventional wisdom was not in going in that direction. But once I was able to really see the, the cause and effect, because there were a lot of weird symptoms that no one ever pieced together. Like I had these very expensive dermatologists in Manhattan, you know, celebrity doctor types. Mm -hmm. No one ever asked what I was eating or drinking. They just like that sold me. stuff. That was me. Like I was, I was going to a dermatologist because I was breaking out. Because you know, for women, you can break out here. Mm -hmm. very alone. And it all on the side of my thing, it started to on my neck down my back. And yeah. that, and I was going to a dermatologist, and that nobody ever asked me like about my gut health. And what crazy? Yeah. <laughs> and I got really scary, um, interested in holistic things, and then um, big thing for me was getting rid of a lot of hair, and my skin cleared up. Yeah, I know. It's, and then I was getting cavities. No one ever, no one ever gave me any, like, what are you drinking? It was just like, oh, it happens. We're going to drill it. Okay. And then my mouth would be numb for two days. Or and then with like my skin, I just remember like, just being like, what is going on? But you, like, there wasn't any level of me that was like, oh, it's just because you're, you know, mainlining sugar all day and drinking Diet Coke. Like it's going out of style. I was like, oh, it must be the hormones, like they said. Mm -hmm. Right. It must be just this is aging or stress or my cell phone's too close to my chin or whatever. I In the meantime, we're going to like inject your face with stuff and then burn it off. And then you're going to take pills and it's all going to be great. 
well, most of that stuff I don't even need anymore because I'm just not eating junk all day. And the reason why our skin is so bad when we're eating a lot of sugar or uh, quick acting carbohydrates is first of all, like our internal hormones are off. But one of the biggest things is our blood sugar is rising and falling and rising and falling. And our skin is a giant organ, right? So when we're eating a lot of sugar, it leads to inflammation, it clogs pores, it makes us age quicker. I mean, everything we say we don't want, we pay all this money to avoid. <laughs> Just not eating this crap can kind of do the same thing for very less, like almost not next to nothing. But that's, there's, that, that doesn't really smooth a lot of magazines, right? <laughs> Right. right, right. There's a lot of product to say, you know, just eat like, you know, vegetables and drink water and, you know, well, let me ask you this. So, when you, so after working when you recently read this book, so tell me about like, what are people going to learn when they read your book? Like, what is, what is kind of the collective that you want people to get out of the book? Well, first of all, there is a, there is another way that is available to live without constantly being in that state of like, I don't like my body. I don't feel comfortable with that. And not that you're going to wake up and look like a supermodel, but your inner peace will come once you stop hijacking your brain constantly with sugar. And a lot of people that don't think they have a problem with sugar, they always forget about wine because wine will also is, is sugar yeah. but when you're able to sort of like step away from the emotional part of food like you're not really afraid of food but you don't live for it I mean you acknowledge you need it to live but you don't look forward to food like you do connecting with a friend or spending time with a loved one or that kind of like um well-being sort of nourishment versus like shoving food in our face. So what I spend a lot of time in my book on is like, you know, how I got here. Cause it's not just like my own story, but like all the education I have, because there's a lot of people in wellness who just look really good in a bikini. So they want you to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Well, there's actually more to it than looking good in a bikini. You have to understand like why certain people gain weight, why other people don't. And also what's a basic food plan that most of us can stick to. And I use the term food plan intentionally because when you're just living, you're not dieting, you're just eating, you're not weighing and measuring and being super um, hypersensitive to every little you know, quarter ounce, but you're also not treating every day like a last supper, which is pretty heavily done in the dieting world. You're like, I'm going to go and diet tomorrow. In the meantime, let's order the chili tries chili cheese nacho fries with the side of milkshakes. So when you're just living and eating pretty regularly, the same kind of food on a regular basis, you take the uh, your mental focus off of food. Your body can kind of regulate because it knows what to expect because you're not binging all weekend and starving all week. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us did that when we were younger, right? We would you know, go out all weekend and drink and eat and not sleep right. And then during the week, we're like green juicing it, which is very confusing for all the systems in your body. So my book is a lot about like just, and I broke it down like four basic things that sound simple, but are actually pretty all encompassing for just a way to find the weight you're supposed to be at and stay there without being afraid of like leaving the house or not having your special food, or you can only eat certain times. Cause I think the more we obsess over that eat four ounces of fish or five ounces of fish, Calor it's not about one yeah. ounce of fish. Yeah. I mean, you should always be aware of portions and you should always be aware. Am I hungry? Am I in the right state of mind to be eating? Cause when we're like shoveling food in or we're stressed out and eating it, our body can't absorb the nutrients we're more likely to get like major GI issues and are missing an opportunity to connect with our body. While if we wait, you know, 15, 20 minutes until, you know, the kids stop screaming or right. not fighting with their boyfriends or whatever, we will be able to like, you know, cause you think about it from like another level, like you're the food we eat 
literally becomes us. It becomes our blood. It becomes our our vibrations. Our, our right. vibrations. It becomes our thoughts. So do we really want our thoughts to be just we're tearing into a baguette of bread and eating it because we're you know frustrated about a flat tire? Or do we want to like sit down, take a minute, you know, be grateful, honor what you're eating? And then it's a lot better environment <laughs> to be bringing yeah. this food into our body and soul than if we're just, you know, and the best example I've <laughs> ever seen. Nourishing, basically. Yeah. Right. It's also like if you think of everyone in the movie theater, they're sitting in the dark, just like shoving in this popcorn that kind of tastes like dirt, but we all get very excited and we smell the movies. We're like, oh, where is that? And we just like walk with our money to pay $9 for a vat of really bad popcorn that we eat in the dark. <laughs> Not even seeing it, right? So Acknowledging the tradition of going to the movie is part of the movie. Yeah, we just do it right. So if we can take a second and just be aware of what we're eating, and also I always have my clients like before they eat, take their like, physical temperature. Like, am I hungry? Like emotionally? Like, where am I? Am I thinking about work? Am I thinking about who got snubbed at the Golden Globes? Or am I, you know, <laughs> th those sort of things, right? And then halfway through, like just taking a minute, putting down your fork or whatever you're eating and just, am I still hungry? Does this taste good? Am I so hungry for this? Because oftentimes I'll be like, this needs to be heated up or I'm going to put this away for later. But if I hadn't taken that moment to just sort of check in, if you've ever eaten too much and got it from the table and then you realize it, <laughs> Your pants are too tight, or you're like, Whoa, that was too much. The showy stretch pants he wears on that. You don't notice until you stand up. Like, so taking a you know 30 seconds to a minute just to pause and check in because if you're having a difficult conversation with your boss, you really shouldn't be eating, even if they're eating, just put down your spoon or your fork. They they won't even care most of the time mm -hmm. or even notice. But if we're inviting this into our bodies under stress, it's not going to end well. So that's something I always have my clients do. And also like 20 minutes after they were done eating, like, how are you feeling? Do you, like physically and emotionally, like physically I'm bloated. Okay, good to know. Maybe dairy is not your friend or maybe because you ate too quickly. And then emotionally, if you're all over the place because you felt like you ate too much or you blew it with the bread basket, just sort of seeing those patterns of when our emotions or feelings and food intersect and just being aware of the patterns because often like in a workplace during the day, you just like eat lunch and then go about your day. And then later you're like, why do I feel weird? And you don't even remember what you ate for lunch when it could be that you like ate too quickly or you ate when you were stressed or you, maybe you're allergic to gluten. I don't know, but if we're tuned out from what we're eating, as soon as it's gone, we can't really make those connections. Yeah. Well, so the thing that I'm kind of hearing from you is really about the beginning, the middle, and the end. Checking in with yourself before, during, after, but it's, but it's more about how is it going to make you feel if you eat this versus then after versus during. <laughs> so, um, so if we're in the holiday season, this is, this is a hard time for everybody. What would be some quick hints? We've got five minutes. So what would be the quick tips that you would tell everyone? I think you know, stay away from the gingerbread cookies, but what are some like practical tips from uh, an integration part other than a boy that you can give people during the holiday season? Sure. Um, one thing that I always think is amazing is we think of the holidays as pretty much everything from Thanksgiving to the second or third of January, right? Halloween. <laughs> Halloween, really, Labor Day if you're a Starbucks. Yeah. But if you sit down and write out the actual parties or dinners you're invited to, unless you're really, really popular, it's not that many actual meals. And a lot of those meals you can still eat at home and no one will care. Your neighbor's cocktail party, for example. Will they even notice if you don't eat a bunch of the hors d'oeuvres they have, probably not. But if you ate what you know agrees with you at home, you'll be a lot more likely to not accidentally eat, you know, 
20 macaroons while talking to someone standing up drinking champagne. So eating ahead of time, but also just acknowledging that the holidays are a mindset. It's a choice. It's a way we view weeks of our lives when actually it's like a handful of meals. And in those handful of meals, you kind of still have a choice. Like no one or very rarely does someone make you eat pie. And you know, there's many ways you can get around the well-meaning yet pushy relatives or those sort of traps that we see, but they aren't really as much of a obstacle as we present them to be because we've built them up as an excuse for how we can just eat how we want. And everyone gains weight and that's how it is. When actually if it's a handful of meals, you can navigate around, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner and like the brunches or whatever, because there's always a choice. You don't always have to, drink all day on new year's you really <laughs> day drinking, <laughs> but we're you know everyone just sort of is like well you know i have to it's a, it's a holiday i have no choice it's like well what about that random tuesday when you're at work and there's a bunch of junk in the staff room you're just eating it like let's just call it what it is so let's not say it's the holidays or you're being you know, it's your mulligan, it's your mulligan, so to speak. Yeah, you're not, you're not you're being spirited. You're just eating those random, like, uh, butter cookies that are in the <laughs> pens and the pretzels with the sugar on. You're just eating junk. So <laughs> don't, don't, I mean, Santa does not care. Whoever you believe does not care. It's just you're eating junk and you're trying to tell yourself a story about why. And then later, the thing about sugar is like the more sugar we eat, eat the more sugar we want because it does have that drug like impact so if you've ever had a little bit of sugar like a week before halloween but by halloween night you're like screw the little kids you're turning off the light and eating it all yourself yeah because your sugar desire has been has been increasing 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 because we need more to get that buzz and over like six weeks of the holidays that's a lot of sugar by the end if we let ourselves go there. And what's important to think about too, is we always go there with our mind first. We might think we just popped the cookie in our mouth and there could have been a very short amount of time that we were making these decisions, but there always is time to make the decision or to make the decision that like, I'll eat it later or I'm good or no, thank you or whatever. I'm eating it because it's here. I, yeah, it. I mean, I right, right. just remember like just sitting around like after, you know, Christmas with my relatives and just, we pick at food for like an hour. No one's sitting well. Right. Yeah. Just I know because if everybody puts the food away, you don't, you don't, yeah, it's, it's about access, proximity. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's also a lot of it, like, you know, during the holidays to still keep up with those healthy habits you have the rest of the year, whether it be meditating every morning or drinking a lot of water, doing yoga, whatever fuels you. Don't stop for six weeks because of the holidays. That's the choice you're making when, if anything, what I like to propose is during times where we know there's a lot going on is when you have to take even better care of yourself, get a little extra sleep, you know, let the DVR catch up on those shows, you know, lay off of the stressful situations that we choose to go into because you can always decline things. Yeah. You don't have to host everything, yeah. <laughs> but getting this, we have the, we have to, we should. Like, I always think my kids to the Rockettes every year. I live outside of New York City. Probably like the eighth time I saw them, my kids were like, can we stop now? I'm like, I thought you guys loved it. They're like, we thought you did. I'm like, okay, cool. Like saved hours and many dollars. So there's a lot of things we think we should do, but just assessing, do we really need to do them right now? Mm -hmm. If it adds more stress to your life, because that's stress on our body. And that does impact us over time. And then it affects most of the chain. Of the really yeah. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for being here. I, I, if you want to share with everybody where they can read your book, where they can find the best way to contact you, all that sure. stuff. Well, my book is on pre sale or pre order, whatever you call it now, on Amazon and barnesnoble.com. It'll be in bookstores December 18th, just in time. Oh, well, I can't to my diet. Why can I stick to my diet? It looks like uh, it's blue for those of you who. Still go to book. <laughs> and um, 
you know, they said it'd be a really good gift when they were talking about marketing it 10 months ago. I don't know who you would give it to with that title. They'd have to be open to it. Give it, you to, can yourself. Also, give it to yourself. Give it to yourself. Give it to, yourself. Yeah. Give it to people that won't get offended. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's on Kindle. It's all those usual places. But my website is just Aaron Wathen Wellness. So Wathen's yeah. W-A-T-H-E-N. So. Yeah. It's right here on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Iron Wathen. Wathen. <laughs> <laughs> but um it, but yeah and, um and so they can read your your website yeah. okay exactly. and, and also one-on-one -on -one coaching to help people with emotional eating um if that's not the way you're ready to be at her because of it's on pre-sale when do they start shipping? do you know when when they'll start shipping uh i think like the 16th so it'll be at your house by the 18th so okay so you have you order it now have it before you can have it for 2019. <laughs> You'll have it on, in time to hand out in people's stocking. So, <laughs> thanks for being here and um, Thank talk you. To, thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you guys soon. All right, let's see.